I have to admit, I'm not a big fan of heavy digital manipulation when it comes to portraiture. I used to hire myself out for boudoir work. As you can imagine, most of my time was spent at the computer retouching and contouring and you know, that's just the nature of the business. And, but you do enough of that kind of work and you start to really appreciate the idea of finding beauty in the so-called flaws. I prefer natural skin over a plastic or porcelain look. And I've seen some amazing retouching work, you know, where um, the skin still has the characteristics of actual human skin. Uh, and the retouching artist has made it flawless. But, you know, the thing is to me, it still ends up looking fake and sometimes a little creepy. Uh, now, I've heard about Portrait Pro 15 and I downloaded the trial version, which I'll show you in a minute. Now, Portrait Pro is software that automates digital retouching for portraits. And of course, I wasn't too keen on that idea. I mean, if I didn't like most of the stuff that, you know, human retouchers were doing, then why would I like something like this, right? Now, the marketing of the software shows that it goes beyond just fixing skin. It actually reshapes the face in a portrait. So I had a few reservations about that too. I wondered if it was even ethical or if it would, you know, offend your portrait subjects, you know, seeing themselves transformed really radically. Uh, like I could just hear somebody saying, you know, what was so wrong with the way I actually look? But you know, I try to keep an open mind and I was a little curious. So I downloaded the trial version of Portrait Pro and I want to give you a little demo of my first impressions with it. Okay, let's start off by opening up Portrait Pro. And um, you can see it's got a simple, clean UI. It's got a help menu and helpful tool tips. Now, there are some options in the settings that kind of threw me, like um, automatically find gender age and ask if the subject's mouth is closed when adjusting the mouth outline. Uh, you know, but these things make sense when you start to understand how the technology built into the software works. All right, I'm going to open up an image of Molly. Portrait Pro starts looking for faces and it can actually find more than one face in a photo. So that's why it's doing this. Um, all right, then we get to this dialogue asking you to confirm the gender and whether this is a kid's face or not. And uh, we're going to tell the software to process as a female who is older than 12. And you can see here, that's what it's trying to determine. And it runs through its thing to set up the processing of the image. You can see here, it gives us an initial look which is already pretty impressive, actually. Now, uh, the before side of the window is where we can make any adjustments to the guides that the software is using to process updates to the image. And if I move these uh, just slightly, it updates the after side of our window over here. And uh, I'm just doing minor adjustments here. Uh, you can see over in this panel, um, there are lots of presets that you can use right away. And you can fine tune anything in the portrait improving sliders panel just below this. I'm gonna click the female glamorous preset first. And you can hold this down here to flip back and forth between the original image and the enhanced one. All right, uh, let's go back to female standard and we'll try out the makeup presets which might change the eye makeup uh, lipstick color, things like that. Okay, let's zoom in. Now, look, my biggest worry is that hitting the image with all of these, you know, mostly automatic enhancements, I worry that it's gonna ruin the look of the skin or just, just really look unnatural. But uh, actually, we're getting some pretty decent results so far. Let's flip back and forth again. And that's uh, quite a difference. All right, there are some interesting lighting effects in here too. Uh, we'll try this one. It's called Light From Above. And this adds uh, lighter and darker tones on areas of the face that would suggest, you know, whatever kind of directional lighting you're choosing here. And the one thing I don't quite understand is how the black and white presets work. Now I get this weird color bleed through, but it's probably because I'm not using it correctly. I don't know. Um, anyway, let's go back to the look that we had going and compare it to the original again. Um, 
And with a photo like this, I have to say I'm really impressed with what this software can do. All right, but now I want to show you how you can actually get in and make some custom adjustments to parts of the face. I mean, look at all of these controls, specifically uh, just for the look of the eyes. Now, there's a set of makeup controls too, and let me show you how easy it is to change the look of the lipstick, for example. Here, I've turned the, the color kind of hot pink, and it's... Uh, it's not falling on the lips the way that it should, and that's happening mostly around the edges. Um, but if you go over here, you can specify for the software, you know, where the edges of the lips are. And you can see on the other side of this panel that the adjustments are being updated in real time, which is pretty handy. And you can change the lipstick color to something else. It's pretty easy to do all this. Um, Let's use the eyebrow pencil to fill in the brows a little. Okay, now the mascara control is interesting. You can add mascara and even go big with false eyelashes if you want. That looks very realistic to me. Uh, and not that I need to, but I can also nudge part of the original makeup if I think it's going to help. And this upper eyeshadow control works really well too. All right. Okay, let's look at all of this again. And remember, we're just dealing with the face here. We're not changing the rest of the image. So that's something you'd have to do some other way. Um, we can see the before and after on the same side of the window. And it's a really dramatic difference. Um, the result is very nice, though, I think. Okay, now all this is not to say that uh, the easy presets are going to work well on every portrait or on every face. I want to show you, uh, let's open up a different image and let the software go through its process. You can see that it found the various parts of the face and gave us a default starting point, which uh, doesn't look too bad. And uh, I'm going to select the female glamorous preset and we're starting to see a dramatic difference between the before and after versions now. Okay, let's add the light from above effect like we did on the previous example. And we'll try a couple of the makeup presets to see what we get. Okay, that's a little too much, don't you think? Uh, that looks definitely overdone. And this, you know, kind of looks like what you'd expect, I guess. Uh, the lipstick looks good. But I mean, you can see in, in this new image, uh, it just doesn't look anything like our model, to me anyway. And, and all this looks very unnatural. Now on this image, I think we really need to tweak things and go with a more subtle approach to get it to look okay. Um, but yeah, here I'm just not very happy with how this looks. All right, let's go back to our first image and compare it to a quick editing job that I did in Photoshop. So, okay, so on the left is my Photoshop edit where I tried to keep uh, a natural look, but, you know, clean up the skin a little. And over here on the right is our Portrait Pro version, uh, which admittedly might be a little over the top. It kind of doesn't look like the, the same model anymore, but you know, in and of itself, it's a pretty good looking result. I think it's easy to go overboard with something like this, but even Portrait Pro's PDF manual, you know, even that recommends subtle enhancements over drastic ones. All right, but some of the changes do look a bit artificial, and that is my main concern. Uh, at the same time, if you want to work fast, Portrait Pro strikes a really good balance between the quality of the result and the time it takes to actually get there. All right, just remember that for the average client, it can be a fine line between improving a portrait and making uh, the subject look unlike themselves. Well, so again, you know, the subtle enhancements on some subjects uh, are good, but you can obviously take more liberties where it comes to enhancing the look of a paid model, for example, where it's really not about capturing uh, a true likeness, but it's more about what you need the photo for. Okay, I'm going to put a link to Portrait Pro in the description below if you want to give it a try. Uh, I hope you found this video useful. Uh, if you haven't already, go ahead and click the subscribe button, click like, and leave a comment below to let me know what you think about the idea of using a product like this. Uh, that's it for today. See you next time.